in the wake of the Mueller report, the lies from the White House uh, have been making headlines. It's no wonder why Trump's aides don't think twice about just making stuff up. It's because tone starts at the top. Witness Press Secretary Sarah Sanders, who admitted to the special counsel uh, that her May 2017 claims about countless FBI agents wanting James Comey fired was not founded on anything. It was just a slip of the tongue, she said. But it wasn't. Sanders made similar claims multiple times on two different days. She has no credibility left. And yet, in Trump world, that reality might actually help her because when we point out that she's making stuff up, it makes the president hold on to her, support her, stand by her because she's taking it to the media. That's how twisted this has become. All right, back with me to discuss Ezra Klein, Tim Naftali, Katie Rogers, April Ryan. And April, let's start with you because you have called for Sanders to be fired. What's the likelihood, you think, that she actually is going to be out as a result of these lies? Well, you know, I don't know, but I say the reality is it's about credibility. And we are seeing this nation talk about the credibility of yeah. Sarah Huckabee Sanders at that podium. Um, you know, if the, if the clamoring continues, uh, I believe something will happen. I hear that the White House is very upset about this right now, this moment, this, these conversations about Sarah Huckabee Sanders and her, hmm. uh, I guess, tenure at, the, at that podium. But right. here's, here's the issue. Under oath, she acknowledged that she lied. Under oath. That's not the only lie that has been told from that sacred room, from that sacred podium to the American public and the world. Okay. The reason why this is so important is because everything is in the balance at the White House. We are all touched by what happens and is said from the White House. War and peace, life and death are written and spoken from that podium or from the Oval Office. She is the president's mouthpiece. Her credibility is shot. Okay, we, we got that one piece uh, from Mueller. We understand that. Also, I mean, there's a list of things uh, and more, but I'll detail another one uh, about the payment to Stormy Daniels. That was a lie. And then also that propaganda video from our colleague, for our, against our colleague, Jim Acosta, a propaganda video against Jim Acosta. This is the United States. This is not Russia. This is not China from the White House, from the president's spokesperson. So credibility is a huge piece of the, pu of, of the puzzle, and her yeah. credibility is shot. You said uh, the other day on Aaron Burnett's show that Sarah Sanders' head should be lopped off. Her father, Mike Huckabee, then said you were inciting murder. Were you trying to incite murder? <sighs> okay, Brian, do you have the whole transcript of what I said? I do. You were saying she should be fired, she should be uh, you know, forced out of the job. And you said, I think, head lopped off, obviously, in the rhetorical sense everybody understands. And, and I said it as they, not me. I said it as they. You know about the firing acts? You know, and when we talk about people being fired, heads will roll. It had nothing. I do not push for or support any type of violence against anyone. OK, so um, but I said what I said, and it was not about violence. It was about the chopping axe, the or the head rolling as far as the job. So right. if you want to, let's clean it up and say she should be fired, period. End of story. Now, Katie Rogers, Sarah Sanders' job has changed uh, over the past couple of years. Uh, she used to be holding briefings almost every day. Right now, it's been 41 days since a White House press briefing on camera there in the briefing room. We're coming up uh, on a new record. If she hits 42 days, that'll be a new record, a number of days without a briefing. What does she do nowadays? What is Sanders' job every day now? Well, I mean, Sarah is well-liked among the staff in the White House because she takes a lot of incoming. She is trusted by the president. Um, she has a good relationship with him. And in a White House that is essentially run like the Trump Organization, uh, her loyalty and her connection with him counts for a lot. Um, she does, I mean, she does answer questions from the press and, you know, given this latest story about her credibility called into question, I don't know how often, um, but she, she does do her job. She has a place, uh, but she doesn't, you're right, she doesn't do briefings. Those have kind of gone by the wayside, and that is because 
officials in the White House know that a lot of the things they might say to the public will be immediately undermined by the president or change course by the president. And that is not actually unique to this White House. Uh, Larry mm. Speaks, who was Reagan's press secretary, told the press, we're not going to invade Grenada and that the invasion occurred the next day. Uh, mm. Jay Carney, who was Obama's press secretary, took some flack for what he said uh, that was misleading about the Affordable Care Act. It's not uncommon, but this is typical in this White House. That's the difference. Yeah, they just take it to 11. So, Tim Naftali, is there uh, any history, any precedent for a press secretary uh, leaving or being forced out due to deceit and deception? Yes, there is, in fact. Uh, people around Richard Nixon uh, decided to move Ron Ziegler, who was press secretary, out of the job um, because he had lost his credibility by, uh, by 1974. Um, when the, his deputy was asked, do you hate the press? His deputy, Jerry Warren, said, no, I don't. And so he did not get the official title of press secretary because to be press secretary for Richard Nixon, you had to avowedly hate the press. This question was wow. asked in front of Richard Nixon. Wow. It wasn't asked by him. It was asked by Al Haig, but it was in front of Nixon. Wow. But Ziegler did Ziegler lose. was pushed out. My goodness. Uh, let me ask you, and I don't mean this literally, do you think Attorney General Bill Barr is acting as press secretary? You know, whatever that presser was on Thursday. Well, I'm... I'm surprised that the Attorney General hasn't decided to resign. And oh. I'm saying that because the Mueller report makes clear the kind of person the President mm. expects to be his Attorney General. Ah. He wants his Attorney General to be his personal lawyer and, as he said, a fixer. A fixer. And the question one has to ask Mr. Barr, after um, working for George Herbert Walker Bush, do you really want to be Attorney General for someone who is expecting you not to represent the justice system? but to be his fixer. Hmm. So I think, Ezra Klein, the last question in, in this block goes to you, and that is, I think probably the really, really big question, impeachment. Uh, what I hear on Fox is that the media is obsessed about impeachment. Where do you think this conversation is gonna go in the days and weeks to come? I think impeachment's a hard question. So I don't think there's any doubt that in a working system where you had the ability to enforce accountability on the president, the clear pattern of obstruction of justice would merit and should merit an impeachment inquiry. Um, at the same time, uh, you do not have, I think, any chance of getting the votes in the Senate for impeachment, for removal, I should say. And you also have a public that is largely, at least so far, according to a March CNN poll, against impeachment. Only 36 percent are for it. So the, the problem the Democrats are facing is, on the one hand, impeachment inquiry is very likely merited. On another hand, their own base really wants it. And they also believe it will unite Republicans and split them, that it may do exactly the thing you don't want it to do, which is that instead of bringing the president to heel, it will help him. It will actually end up validating the very behavior you're trying to curb. So it's, a, it's tough, and I would say that I think the reason it is tough is that we have a broken system of accountability. We are not supposed to have a system where accountability mm. is fully and only a partisan act, where any time you're trying to hold the president accountable, it's up to the opposition party. Impeachment, like a lot of things in our, our system, the way it works now, it needs a lot of bipartisan support for anything to get done, and particularly anything that big to get done. But there's no bipartisan support to get it done. Um, Nixon's impeachment would not have gone forward in the way that it had if Republicans had refused to participate. So the fact that we can't even conceive of something like this actually working to curb what is clearly a lawless uh, executive speaks not just to problems right now, but a deeper problem in our system of constitutional accountability.